بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر ویورز ان دا پریویس سیشنز وی ہیو بین ڈسکسنگ دا کلیکشن آف دا قرآن نیریٹو ایز اسکرائب ٹو علی رضی تعالیٰ عن ہو وی ہیو فنشڈ کرٹیک ان اینالائزنگ دیز نیریٹو ویز وی دی سنی سورسز اینڈ ان دا پریویس کپل آف سیشنز وی ہیو آلسو سین دی کرٹیک آن دی نیریٹو ایز دے ہیو بین ڈسکسڈ اینڈ مینشن ان دا شیٹ سورسز Uh, today in this last and final session on this topic, uh, we shall discuss the, the critique or the uh, issues which arise on the chains of narration of the 16 uh, narratives which are recorded in the Shiite uh, books of, um, of history and Hadith uh, vis-a-vis this collection. Now, these, this critique will also uh, depend uh, almost entirely on the Shiite Rijal books. Uh, wherever they are, uh, they, are, they are called upon to do so, we'll, not, we'll discuss the Shiite Rijal uh, books when we are discussing the, these chains of narration. And I think it is only befitting to do this because since we are discussing these uh, narratives from Shiite sources, then we should discuss uh, the critique which arises on the, on the uh, narrators uh, from the Shiite uh, Rijal books. Now, uh, as you will recall, we, we had discussed 16 narratives and uh, we had discussed the critique which arises on their text in the last session. So I'll begin uh, with the chain of narration of these uh, narratives, uh, discussing the, the critique on them. And uh, I'll start off with the first and second narrative because both of them have been discussed by uh, Sulaim ibn Qais in his Kitab. And uh, as far as uh, the Kitab of uh, Sulaim ibn Qais is concerned, uh, we find the following information in Shiite sources. Now, first of all, I'm going to cite Ibn al-Ghazairi from his Rijal and uh, he's, what his comments are Uh, regarding this book because uh, if you recall the first two narratives are from uh, are mentioned and cited in this kitab uh, the kitab of Sulaim ibn Qais so uh, uh, ibn Ghazali says wal kitab ma'dhu'un la mariyata fihi wa ala zalika alamat fihi tadullu ala ma zakarna minha ma zakara in minha ma zukira anna Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr aw wa'aza وعز أبا عند الموت وعز أباه عند الموت ومنها أن العمة سلاسة عشر وغير ذلك وأسانيد هذا الكتاب تختلف تارة برواية أمر بن عزينة أمر بن عزينة من إبراهيم عن إبراهيم بن عمر الصنعاني عن ابن عن أبان بن عبي أيعش عن سليم وتارة يروي عن عمر عن أبان بلا واسطة The translation of this of these words are and the book is a fabrication There is no doubt about it, and there are clues which testify to this. Among them is that Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr counseled his father at his death, and that the Imams are 13. Uh, the chains of this book are different. Sometimes Umar ibn Uzayna reports from Ibrahim ibn Umar al-Sana'ani, who reports from Aban ibn Abi Ayyash, who reports from Sulaim, and sometimes it is narrated by Umar ibn Uzayna, who directly narrates from Aban. Now, Ibn Daud, I'm going to move on to the next person, uh, the, the next Rizal authority. He, uh, while writing about Sulaim ibn Qais, uh, he says in his book, also called Rijal, يُنْسَبُ إِلَيْهِ الْكِتَابَ الْمَشْهُورِ وَهُوَ مَوْضُوعٌ بِدَلِيلٌ أَنَّهُ قَالَ إِنَّ مُحَمَّدَ مُحَمَّدَ بْنِ أَبِي بَكَرْ وَعَزَ أَبَاهُ إِنَّ مَعَوْتِهِ وَقَالَ فِيهِ أَنَّ الْأَئِمَّ سَلَاسَ عَشَرْ مَعَ زَيْدِ وَأَسَانِيدُهُ مُخْتَلِ وَمَا عُزُنُّهُ إِلَّا مَوْضُوعًا A translation of this passage is, To him is attributed a famous book. This book is a fabrication. Because in it is said, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr counseled his father at his death, and that the Imams are 13, together with Zayd, and the book has different chains of narration. The only person to have narrated it from Sulaim is Aban ibn Abi Ayyash, and in the book are found strange things which have become famous. And thus, I regard this book, and I regard it to be a fabrication. Now, Sheikh Al-Mufid, in his Tashil Aqayat, now I'm, I'm going to uh, bring before you the comments that he has made about this book. He says, هَذَا الْكِتَابِ غَيْرُ مَوْسُوقٍ بِهِ وَلَا يَجُوزُ الْعَمَلْ عَلَىٰ أَكْسِرِهِ وَقَدْ حَسَلَ فِيهِ تَخْلِيط وَتَدْلِيس فَيَنْبَغِي لِلْمُتَدَيِّنْ أَنْ يَجْتَنِبَ الْعَمَلْ بِكُلِّ مَا فِيهِ وَلَا يَعُولُ عَلَىٰ جُمْلَتِه وَلِيَفْرَغَ إِلَى الْعُلُمَا فِي مَا تَزَمَّنَهُ مِنْ أَحَادِيثِ لِيُوَقِّفُوهُ عَلَى السَّحِي مِنْهَا وَالْفَاسِدُ This book is not reliable and it is not permissible to act on what, on what, what most of it says. There are many discrepancies and falsehoods in it. 
A religious person should refrain from acting on everything it says and he should not depend on its content and not blindly follow its narr narrators. He should seek refuge with the scholars regarding the narratives it contains so that they can inform him about the, about the, about the, right, from among, uh, the right among them from the wrong. So, viewers, this is a summary of uh, three main people uh, who have uh, 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 written their criticisms on this kitab. Now, uh, let me uh, also bring before you a person called Alauddin al-Musawi, who uh, has written uh, an, a response to these criticisms. And he has written this in violent writing, his, his preface uh, to the kitab, Sulaim ibn Qais, uh, and this book has been published from Tehran in 1407 Hijra. Now, he has tried to respond to these criticisms, and before he does so, he first summarizes these criticisms, and he says that there are primarily three criticisms that, which have been uh, raised by these people. He says that the counsel of Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr to his father at his death, even though he was a little over two years of age at that time. So he says that the first point of criticism is that Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr counseled his father, and while he was counseling his father, it is said that he was just two years of age. Or, so he says that this is something which is very improbable, which, which of course pe who, people who contend when they criticize this book to be an improbable thing. The second point of criticism according to him is that the Imams are 13 and the third point of criticism according to him is that the, books, that the book has different chains of narration. Now he answers the first criticism by saying that in the version of the book which Istarabadi refers to in his book on Rajal, it is mentioned that it was Abdullah ibn Umar who counseled his father at his father's death and it is known that Abdullah was a grown-up man at that time. Another answer he gives while summarizing the response of Ijaz Hussain al kanturi from his Kashf al Hujub is that if the report is believed that Muhammad ibn Bakr was actually four years at the time of his father's death, then such a counsel cannot be far fetched. At, a, at even at this tender age, sometimes such incidents, uh, such an incident does occur. So he says that another point is that uh, if even if it is accepted. Uh, that he, it was, uh, if it was uh, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, then it was, he was a four years of, of age, then this is something which is uh, plausible. He answered the second criticism. And he answered the second criticism by again quoting Istarabadi, who has said that in the version of Kitab Sulaim ibn Qais, which has reached him, it is written that the Imams were 13, and this included the Prophet Muhammad sallam, as well. So a similar answer is also, is also given by some of the other people. So he says that this criticism that the Imams were 13, whereas, whereas actually we know that were 12, he says that the, they, have, they actually include the Prophet himself and therefore there is nothing wrong with it. Now he answers the fourth criticism by saying that if a book has different chains of narration in the manner referred to by Ibn Ghazairi, then there is no defect at all. This is no defect at all. Uh, as it was a general practice of previous scholars to report books from different chains, and examples of such books are Al Kafi and Al Khisal. So he says, uh, he has, in his own opinion, he's tried to answer all these three criticisms. Now, after answering these criticisms, Al Musafi says that there are some other criticisms also on Kitab Sulaim ibn Qais which have come to his notice. He refers to Al Bahbudi's Ma'rifa Al Hadith and then summarizes these criticisms. Now, in my personal opinion, uh, if, if, we, if these criticisms are analyzed, and perhaps the most weighty of these is that the, which, which hinges on the personality of Aban ibn Abi Ayyash, who lived through 65 to 138 Hijra. Now, according to Al-Bahbudi, all the chains of narration of the book end on Aban ibn Abi Ayyash. Only Aban reports it from Sulaim, and only Umar ibn Uzayna reports it from Aban, and Aban has been classified as Matruk. So here is what uh, some of the Shiite books uh, say about Aban ibn Abi Ayyash. So Ibn Daud uh, writes, Ibn Daud al-Hilli writes, Za'ifun, qila innahu waza khitab Sulaim ibn Qais, which means that Aban ibn Abi Ayyash is za'if. It is said that he fabricated the book of Sulaim ibn Qais. Now Atusi says that he is za'if, and Ibn al-Ghazali says, Za'ifun la yultafatu ilayh. Uh, he is za'if and should not be paid attention to and our scholars have attributed to him the fabrication of the book of Sulaim ibn Qais. Sunni authorities also regard him to be very weak. 
Imam Ahmed, and I, when I quote the Sunni authorities, they are only quoted in, as a secondary uh, in, uh, issue in here because we already know that the, uh, the Shiite sources have already impugned him. So this is just a, as a reinforcement that I am citing uh, the Sunni sources. So Imam Ahmad uh, and uh, Ibn Hajar say that Aban ibn Abi Ayyash is matruk. An Nasai regards him to be matruk al hadith, and we know. People who are matruk al hadith, then uh, they are basically people who are liars. They are, they are people who are guilty of fabrication. While responding to the criticism, uh, Al Musavi says that the book has also been reported from another chain of narration as mentioned by An Najashi. So uh, let me just uh, summarize what I have just said that these are the criticisms which actually Musavi has pointed out. Uh, as I said, the, the, the most weighty of these criticisms which he has pointed out is that these, the that the personality of Avan ibn Abi Ayyash is impugned, and I have also reinforced it by some of the quotations. But now Behbudi again responds to this. He says, although we can exceed the fact that these chains of narration which contain Avan ibn Abi Ayyash can be disregarded, he has quoted another chain. He says that uh, the book has also been reported from another chain of narration which is mentioned by An-Najashi. And now he mentions that chain of narration. He says that, Akhbarani, Ali ibn Ahmad al-Qummi qala haddasana Muhammad ibn al-Hassan ibn al-Walid qala haddasana Muhammad ibn Abi al-Qasim majalwayh an Muhammad ibn Ali al-Sayrafi an Hamad ibn Isa wa Usman ibn Isa qala Hamad ibn Isa wa haddasana Ibrahim ibn Umar al-Yamani an Sulaim ibn Kais bil-Kitab. So this is a chain of narration we cite and he says that uh, actually this is a chain in which Aban ibn Abi Ayyash does not figure and hence uh, it is a reliable chain of narration. So in other words, since this book is reported to Ibrahim ibn Umar al-Yamani, uh, al-Musafi dismisses this ob objection. He says that there is this single one chain of narration in which this uh, kitab of Sulaim ibn Qais uh, has reported by Ibrahim ibn Umar and not by, Ibra uh, by uh, Aban ibn Abi Ayyash. Now, viewers, it is submitted that Muhammad al Bakr Ansari, in his preface to Kitab Sulaim ibn Qais, has enumerated 20 chains from which this book has been narrated from Sulaim as recorded by various authorities. In all except one of uh, these chains, a Ban report from Sulaim. And lo and behold, this exception is the chain quoted above by An Najashi. It is obvious that Aban is not present in this chain. However, as pointed about, out by Imam al Khui, uh, what makes this chain unreliable is the presence of Abu Sumaina Muhammad ibn Ali al sayrafi Now, he is the person who is present. So, all, even if it is submitted that uh, Aban ibn Abi Ayyash is not present in, uh, that, in this particular chain of narration, but the fact is that Abu Sumaina is a person who is Zaiful. He, uh, he actually, Al Khui himself says that he is Zaifun Kazab. He is weak and he is a liar. Now, it may further be noted that Najashi's opinion about him is Zaifun Jiddan. He has heretical beliefs. Uh, the words are Fasidul Etiqad. He cannot be trusted in any matter. La yu'tamadu fi shay is what he says. Al Hilli also expresses a similar opinion. Al Kashi records that Al Fazl ibn Shazan has mentioned, uh, mentioned famous liars in his books. And the most famous among these are Abu al Khattab, Yunus ibn Zabiyan. Yazid as saghir Muhammad ibn Sinan, and Abu Sumaina. So he is among those liars that he has mentioned in his book. So in other words, none of the chains through which this book is transmitted is reliable. So, in, uh, so viewers, uh, uh, let me summarize the fact that since all of the chains of narration through which this book has been transmitted are unreliable, hence uh, we cannot trust this book. We, we, can, we have seen how Sulaim ibn Qais himself is impugned. We have seen how most of the chains of narration which contain Aban ibn Abi Ayyash, uh, the personality of Aban himself is, is unreliable. And we have also seen that even if there is, a sing, there is one chain in which Aban is not present, uh, we still see that another person by the name of Abu Sumaina is present and he has been regarded, uh, regarded as a liar, a kazab. Uh, by Shiite authorities themselves. So all in all, we can summarize and say and safely conclude that, that the, the Kitab of Sulaim ibn Qais is ex in a totally unreliable book and narratives which are recorded in this book cannot be trusted in any way. Now, viewers, let's move on to the, uh, uh, the remaining narratives. Now, as far as narratives three and four are concerned, they do not have any chain of narration. You will recall that they do not have any chain of narration. It needs to be noted that according to Al-Majlisi, most narratives in Al-Hitijaj are Mursal. 
so we have to uh, regard this as well that majlisi in his al bihar al anwar says that most of the narratives which are found in tabrasis al ihtijaj and we see that narratives 3 and 4 they are found in uh, tabrasis al ihtijaj and also please note the fact that as i have just pointed out that these narratives have no chain of narration now narrative 5 as per shiite authorities uh, is sound uh, because it is reported through a sound chain of narration and it ends on one of their imams which is imam jafar sadiq however according to the principles of historical criticism it is weak because we know viewers that imam jafar sadiq lived from 80 to 148 hijra and he never met ali ridala anhu who lived who had died in 40 hijra so uh, uh, they, these two could not have met and uh, uh, obviously Imam Jafar Sadiq is not contemporaneous to the events which are being uh, reported uh, by, in, these, uh, in these narratives. So, uh, the, uh, so therefore narrative number five also stands to question and uh, we, should, we shall disregard it. Now as far as narrative uh, uh, number six is concerned it is regarded by Zaif as by Majlisi. So Majlisi in his Mirat al-Ukul says that this narrative is Zarif, so uh, it does not need any further elaboration, hence. Now, as far as nar narratives 7, 8 and 9 are concerned, they do not have any chain of narration. Again, we are faced with a, this ordeal that uh, narratives 7, 8 and 9 do not have any chain of narration, and hence, viewers, we cannot uh, regarding to be, regard them to be uh, reliable. Now, narrative number 10 has Jaf Jabir ibn Yazid al-Jurafi in it. Uh, he is a narrator who has been regarded as untrustworthy. Now, according to a Najashi, he is Mukhtalit. Uh, moreover, the narrative is reported through a chain of narration that ends on one of their imams, who is Imam Baqir. So, although Imam, uh, uh, although uh, uh, Jabir ibn Yazid al jurafi is uh, a person who is Mukhtalit, uh, which means that uh, he he is uh, has a uh, does not have a very sound memory, we also see that this narrative is Munkata because it is reported uh, through Imam Baqir and we know that Imam Baqir uh, lived through 57 to 117 Hijra and therefore he could never have been contemporaneous to the events which are mentioned in these narratives and uh, because of this we will uh, disregard this narrative as well. Now it may also be noted that while some authorities in Sunni Rajal books regard him to be reliable Others have done jar on him. Again, I am quoting Sunni uh, books as a secondary evidence in this regard, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Jabir ibn Yazid al jurafi So, uh, Al-Mizzi has recorded some jar on Jabir ibn Yazid. He says that the opinion, in the opinion of Yahya ibn Ma'in, as reported by Abbas al duri Jabir is a great liar. He is Kazab. Imam Abu Hanifa says that he has not met anyone who is a bigger liar than Jabir ibn Yazid. So he says that he, the, he has not met anyone who is a greater liar than Jabir ibn Yazid. Uh, Abu Hatim reports uh, from Ahmad ibn Hanbal that Yahya and Abdurrahman al-Mahdi had abandoned him. Uh, the words are Tarakuhu. According to a Nisai, he is Matruq al-Hadith. At another place, he says that he is Laysa bisiqa and uh, Laysa bisiqa wa la yuktabu hadithuhu. Al-Hakim calls him Zahib al-Hadith and according to Ibn Hajar, he is Za'if and Rafidi. Uh, the chain also contains another person, uh, this chain of, uh, I'm talking about uh, narrative number 10. So this, besides uh, Jabir ibn Yazid, it also contains another person who is also very questionable and unreliable and his name is Amr ibn Abil Miqtam. Now he is actually Amr, uh, Amr ibn Sabit ibn Hurmuz. Uh, although Shia Rijal authorities regard him to be reliable, uh, here is what some of the Sunni Rijal authorities uh, say about him as recorded by Al-Mizzi in his Tazib al-Kamal. Al-Hassan uh, ibn Isa reports that uh, Ibn Mubarak had abandoned his narratives. Muhammad ibn Musanna says that he never heard Abdurrahman al-Mahdi uh, Abdurrahman ibn al-Mahdi narrate from him. In the opinion of Yahya ibn Ma'in, as reported by Abbas al duri he is laysa bisiqa wala ma'moon wala yuktabu hadithuhu. Uh, Abu Zura al-Razi says that he is za'if al-hadith, za'if al-hadith. And Abu Hatim says that he is za'if uh, al-hadith, yuktabu hadithuhu, uh, kana radi ur-rai sharir tashayyu. According to al-Bukhari, he is laysa bil qawi indahum. According to a Nisai, he is Laysa Bisiqa Wala Ma'moon. Ibn Habban says that he narrated fabricated narratives from reliable narrators. 
So this is uh, a summary of uh, Amr ibn al Mikdam. And as I said, that although uh, Shiite books regard him to be uh, a reliable narrator, here is some information uh, which the Sunni Rizal works uh, cite about him. And I have only uh, mentioned this as a secondary evidence because we have already seen that uh, this narrative is unreliable because of the fact that it is not, not only Munkata, but it also contains another person who is uh, uh, Jabir ibn Yazid, who is regarded as, uh, as Mukhtalit. But uh, the primary uh, critique on this narrative is that it is broken because uh, Imam Bakir uh, could not have been contemporaneous to the events which are described in this narrative. Now, viewers, we come to the 11th narrative. Now, the 11th narrative is suspect because al munakhal and Muhammad ibn Sinan are weak because uh, both of these persons are found in the chain of narration of the 11th narratives. Now, as far as al munakhal uh, is concerned, authorities record, كان كوفيا زعيفا وفي مذهبه غلوف وارتفاع قال محمد ibn Mas'ud سألت علي, سألت علي ibn Hassan عن al munakhal ibn al-Jameel فقال so uh, uh, this, this is actually uh, recorded by Al-Hilli and also by Al-Kashi in, uh, in their books which are uh, called Rajal uh, respectively. So Al-Munakhal ibn Jamil belongs to Kufa and is Za'if. This is a translation of the passage that I have just recited before you. We find extremism and exaltation of personalities in his beliefs. Muhammad ibn Masood asked about him from Ali ibn Hassan. He replied, he is la shay muttahamun. Similarly, uh, we find uh, Najashi in his Rijal say, za'ifun fasidur ravaya, that he is za'if and he is fasidur ravaya. Now, it is said that uh, Jabir ibn Yazid al-Jofi, uh, a group of people would narrate whom authorities condemn and regard as weak. And al-Munakhal is included in this group. Now, this has been said by al-Khui in his Mojum uh, al hadith now, the second person which I just mentioned was Muhammad ibn Sinan. Authorities recorded about him, Za'ifun ghalin yadaru ya la yultafatu ilay, which means that he is Za'if, an extremist, fabricates narratives, and should not be paid attention to. And this has been recorded by Al Ghazairi in, in his Rajal. Now, in the opinion of Abu, uh, Abu Abbas al Uqda, he is Za'ifun jiddan, cannot be relied upon, and should not be trusted. Uh, in what is narrated by him alone. Uh, so things that he narrates solely, in, he is not reliable in, in those. Now, Al-Fazl ibn Shazan forbids people to narrate from him, as is recorded by Naja uh, Najashi in his Rajal. Now, uh, let me also point out what Al-Hilli has uh, said about him in his, in his Rajal. He says that, رحمه الله قال إنه سقى وأما الشيخ التوسي رحمه الله فإنه زعفه وكذا قال النجاشي وابن الغزائري قال إنه زعيف غال لا يلتفت إليه رب الكشي فيه قدحا عزيما وأصنع عليه عيزا والوجه عندي التوقف فيما يروي says this is what uh, Hilly says in his Rajal that there is a difference of opinion about him amongst our scholars whilst Sheikh al Mufid regards him to be trustworthy, Sheikh Tusi and Al-Najashi regard him to be Za'if. Ibn al-Ghazari says that he is Za'if, an extremist, and should not be paid attention to. Al-Kashi says that uh, uh, has narrated great blemishes in him, has narrated great blemishes in him, and has also praised him. As fa far as I am concerned, I would not reject what he narrates, but, it's, uh, but abstain from drawing any conclusion from him. So this is what his own opinion is that he would do tawakkuf. Now, in the opinion of Al-Fazal ibn Shazan about Muhammad ibn Sanan, uh, that he is a notorious liar has already been referred to earlier. Now, viewers, we come to, the, to narrative number 12. Now, this is uh, also suspect because of the presence of Ibrahim ibn Ishaq al-Nahawandi. Now, he is an extremely suspect narrator. So, uh, as far as Ibrahim ibn Ishaq is concerned, we find the following jar on him. And uh, uh, first of all, Tusi in his al Faris says, Kana zaifun fi hadisihi, muttahamun fi dinihi. And uh, as far as the Najashi say, uh, is concerned, he says, Kana zaifun fi hadisihi, mathumun. He cited this in his al Rajal. And Ibn al Ghazari says, Fi hadisihi zurf, wa amruhu mukhtalit. Now, use as far as the 13th and the 14th narratives are concerned, they are in Antabrasis al-Ihtijaj and have an incomplete chain of narration. 
therefore uh, again we are regarding to be suspect now the 15th chain, uh, narrative does not have a chain of narration and as far as the 16th narrative is concerned it has Jabur ibn Yazid al-Jawfi and the jar on him has already been cited earlier and it also has Amr ibn Shamr and Amr ibn Shamr is regarded as Zaif and Jiddan by Al-Najashi and Hilli and Al-Ghazairi says that he is Zaif. So viewers, uh, we have discussed these 16 changes of narration uh, as regarded in these uh, Shiite works and we can see that none of them can be relied upon. Now, uh, if we make an overall summary of this whole topic that we have discussed, uh, we can clearly see that the narratives which record uh, and the collection of the Quran attributed to, uh, to Ali Ta'ala Anho, both in the Sunni sources and in the Shiite sources, uh, they stand on extremely unreliable uh, grounds and uh, we can deduce nothing from them. As far as narratives are concerned, uh, which are found in the Sunni sources, they present an incomplete picture and uh, have absolutely uh, an, a story which is hard to digest. And similar is the, is the case with the Shiite narratives. Uh, they too present a picture which cannot be relied upon, which has been reported very frivolously and very, uh, in, a, in a very suspect manner. So therefore, I would regard both these narratives, uh, both these categories of narratives to be weak and uh, would abstain from concluding anything uh, from these narratives and would just disregard them. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات